Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Peter Cunningham. I'm uh, part of a, an MB team that's uh, based here in Christchurch, uh, working in support of uh, Warwick uh, and the team in CCDU and, and uh, in Serra. Um, what I'm going to take you through today is um, sort of three key areas, what the scale of the rebuild is um, in the public sector space. Um, just provide you with a bit of national and regional context around some numbers from Stats New Zealand over the last decade and then what uh, the forward work program is looking for, both lo looking at both locally and then nationally. And, um, and then I want to talk more specifically about um, a real opportunity for us to uh, have a different type of approach to the rebuild here in, in Christchurch from a government perspective. Um, so uh, the, the work that uh, I'm talking about now is really sort of started just over a year ago. Um, where Warwick, in discussions with Warwick and Roger Sutton, um, it became apparent that um, we needed some greater visibility over the forward work program um, across the public sector. Um, uh, we've been capturing that information over the last uh, over the last year or so, uh, on a quarterly basis. We're into the fourth iteration of that now, and I'll, I'll share that with you um, in a, in a moment. When we first got the public sector clients together, um, just over a year ago, uh, it's um, we, we asked them to come to a meeting um, with a view on what their forward work intentions would be over the next five years, um, and that total came to 19 billion dollars, which kind of incentivize them to start providing us um, with information which we've been collecting at an aggregated level and also quite s some very specific information about around um, tendering, uh, consenting and design uh, and construction period starts and, and, and end dates. Um, so I've, there's a lot of information that we could go through but I've only got one chart to show you today. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more information then, then come and see me afterwards. Uh, I think the main thing from the, these clients was that we really wanted to try and mitigate against the risk of, um, of uh, resource constraints uh, throughout the rebuild, uh, both in materials and, and labour. Um, but there was a general consensus from those clients that um, in, a, in this resource constrained market that, that we're, we're now entering is that business as usual from a, from a public sector client perspective wasn't really going to cut it and we needed to find um, a different way of doing things. Um, and that's what we've been working on. Uh, that includes how we engage the sector and how, um, and how we procure um, construction work um, across the public sector. Obviously there's some good um, best practice and learning to date that's happening on the ground. Um, Warwick talked about the, um, the, gave an update on the SKIRT programme and clearly there's some, there's some real evidence there of, um, uh, of uh, good practice and, uh, and things that we could potentially take into the vertical rebuild. Uh, so just to give you a bit of an overview on what's happening regionally and nationally, um, in, the, in looking, at, looking back over the last decade, um, the Stats New Zealand data shows us that um, locally uh, construction output hovers between three to four hundred million dollars a quarter. Um, that peaked um, in 2007 at about five hundred million dollars a quarter. Um, what we're looking at, as I'll show you in a moment, is something quite exponentially higher than that, and I'm just talking about uh, the public sector. Um, if you look at that, um, let's try and set the context nationally now, um, is that uh, the, in the boom of 2007, uh, the construction output peaked at three and a half billion a quarter. Um, we're now collecting information with the National Infrastructure Unit in Treasury um, to create a national pipeline. Um, and what that's looking like at the moment is that it hovers around about the five billion per quarter mark for the next uh, five years and goes up as far as six billion per quarter. So, so we're, what we're facing here is an unprecedented amount of work, both locally and nationally, and, and that just reiterates the point that um, from a public sector perspective that business as usual in that type of market isn't going to work and we need to find a different way of, uh, of uh, delivering construction activity. So the information that we've been collecting over the last year has come from these organisations, a real mixture of central government agencies, which I suppose you'd kind of expect, and, um, but also from uh, local government organisations and the likes of the airport, uh, ports and, um, and, and uh, the PMOs uh, from the, the residential insurance sector. Uh, more recently, we've also had Housing New Zealand join us and the University of Canterbury. So the, the public sector clients continue to, uh, who are providing us with information continues to grow. And, and these are, there are some quite significant programs of work in there. So like, for example, the Ministry of Education has a, a billion dollar program over the next 10 years. 
um, and, and University of Canterbury have a, have a similar sized programme over the same period of time. So there's a, there's a huge amount of work that's going on in this region. Uh, so this is what um, our latest data looks like. This is, uh, an up, this is as up to date as last month. And um, if uh, I'll just uh, briefly explain the chart. Um, so along the bottom, you've got um, time, that's the quarters, and up here, you've got value. Um, the dark orange is, um, is council as client. The, the lighter orange is uh, government as client. This red color is the skirt program. This is the um, residential, the green is the residential PMO um, activity. And then the black, the remaining black line is um, the NZTA Roads of National Significance Program. So as you can see there, so this is ba bearing in mind, this is uh, based on information that has been provided to us by those clients that were on the previous slide. So it's by no means uh, a, a comprehensive picture of what's going on in the public sector. And it doesn't include any private sector information you can see there that we're looking at a peak of $900 million a quarter um, in, um, in, uh, towards the back end of next year. Um, so bear in mind what I said previously, um, that typically construction output over the last decade, decade has, in Christchurch has been somewhere between three and $400 million a quarter. So even with the, the information we're collecting here from public sector clients, we're looking at three times that. So, so it's, it's, it's pretty unprecedented. Just to sort of give, give you a quick um, view on, on where we are confidence-wise on government projects, um, so just a quick explanation of this. The dark green is, is uh, construct where construction has already started and working out towards the, light, the very lighter green, which is where there's no major milestones in place. So this graph actually in includes all the residential PMO information. If you take the residential PMO data out of that, it looks like that. So clearly we're kind of at the start of all the work beginning to happen. So, um, so what we're feeling at the moment is, we're, we're as Doug has said, with, uh, with consents um, rising quite rapidly and then plateauing out at a high level, and from what Warwick's been talking about across, um, across the anchor projects, um, we're about to see the work start, so we're not, we're, we're not really into it yet. Um, these are just some caveats. So I'll just say that the main thing for me is that this is a, what I'm showing you here is an underestimation of what the real picture is. And, um, and we present this information as it's reported to by the clients. Um, we've got a relatively high level of confidence in the information we're getting now value-wise. Um, I think as we're getting closer to the work actually happening, uh, the, the clients are getting more realistic about their budgets and, um, um, and their programs of work. Um, but uh, one thing I will say is that the, the, the clients are actually providing this information to us um, on a client-by-client -client basis, so it's in isolation of each other. Um, and some, it is subject to some optimism bias, as you'd kind of expect. So every time we collect this information, um, once a quarter, um, it tends to shift out by a quarter. But, it's, um, but we're, we're getting close. But, but actually, that's, that's getting closer to reality now. So when, um, at the last meeting of the, of the forum, we, um, we put this together, which was a, a master Gantt chart of all of their programs of work on projects over $10 million in value, uh, CapEx. And uh, the main thing here, we've just taken out all the deep. There's 109 projects in this. Um, but in this, in between these two red lines, which is from now to the end of the first quarter in 2015, that's the next seven quarters, there is over $4.1 billion of public sector construction work going from inception to start on site. OK, so, um, so from our perspective, um, and I think from the clients, they're, they're going, right, OK, how can we get this better coordinated? Because they're, they're thinking we look quite uncoordinated here and, and government is looking at slightly disorganised as a, as a construction client. So, so what are we going to do about that? Um, well, Treasury, uh, sorry, Sarah, Treasury and MB have been uh, collaborating together over recent months um, in reporting back to the joint ministers around the Canterbury rebuild. Um, there is the, the reporting back that we've done so far has been that BAU, or business as usual, in a resource-constrained market isn't going to work, that we require a more coordinated uh, programme-managed approach to the rebuild so that we're able to show or share with the sector, have a different type of engagement, uh, share with the sector an increased level of visibility <coughs> of projects, uh, when they're, what projects are going to happen and when, um, and, um, and that will enable the sector to then plan, mobilise and invest accordingly. Um, 
We're also looking to um, obtain more demand data from clients so we actually get a more comprehensive picture of the public sector rebuild and, and we hope to get some private sector information into that as well. Um, and we've also been looking at the supply side and looking at where the constraints and opportunities might be and, uh, and in, in some cases they're not where we thought where, where we thought they might be. So a good example of that in a, in a recent piece of work that Sarah and Embry of MB have completed with Ernst & Young has, has shown us that um, we thought there might be an issue with, with supply of steel. Uh, that's not actually the case. It's actually, it becomes more of a management issue because we need to uh, provide more information about what projects are going to happen when to suppliers so that um, they can redirect some um, current um, steel uh, steel that is um, exported to, to actually keep that, uh, redirect that into the domestic market. That's just one example. So we've been able to put to bed with some of the work we've been doing, some, uh, some of the urban myths around the rebuild of where we think some, there, there might be some materials or labour shortages. Um, and actually what we've been finding is that it's more of a management issue rather than a construction issue. So if we can, if we can actually get this uh, managed programme of work um, organised, and, and sorted, then it's going to enable us to have a different type of engagement with the sector, um, which we hope will have uh, an, an impact on the delivery, delivery of the rebuild. Um, of course, we, we're constantly playing with this balancing act of um, how much does the public sector do, and if you look at the previous slide where it's, there's $4.1 billion happening um, over the next seven quarters, um, or going start on, to start on site, you know, that's clearly going to have an impact on, on, um, on supply of, uh, of supply of construction services to the mar uh, to the to the market, so um, so we're kind of saying right. Well, what are, do we need to put some constraints here on what the public sector can do so that we don't um, create a situation where uh, construction costs start to escalate and it becomes financially unviable for the private sector to reinvest back into the CBD, which is, after all, what the anchor projects are all about. So we're, we're constantly playing off that balancing act, and Sheila will talk a bit more about that in, in, her, in her speech. Um, and just uh, obviously from a Minister of Finance perspective, there's, you know, bearing in mind what's, uh, that we're facing an unprecedented level of work, both regionally here and then nationally, is that there's a, a macroeconomic um, impact that we're also dealing with well, as well, which is, you know, could impact upon reserve bank price, uh, reserve bank rates, and, and then potentially on exports. So this is a very delicate balancing act to be had. So this is what we've been reporting to the joint ministers over the last few months. Um, what we've actually uh, uh, been doing more recently is looking at what our pot potential opportunity is for doing this differently. And, and this, has been, this has been put into a cabinet paper which is going up uh, to a cabinet committee over the next couple of weeks and, and has been signed off by the joint ministers, that's ministers uh, Brownlee, Joyce and English. So, uh, so we want this di different type of engagement with the sector. Uh, we want to be more proactive, we want to have an earlier engagement, we want to provide more visibility around a forward work programme, we want to provide the sector with enhanced certainty of what projects are going to happen and when. As a result of that, we, we think that will enable us to explore alternate um, procurement methods uh, um, and, and in terms of how we go to market, um, trying to get away from the very traditional approach of uh, project by project, RFPs, um, potentially looking at other, um, other, other options that are available, available to us, such as what um, Skirt have done with, um, with their programme of work. That would be one good example. I suppose the key thing really that I'd like to make here is, um, as, as an MB representative is, is that uh, Sarah absolutely have the lead role here, um, lead coordination and management role around uh, this concept that we're, we're working through. Um, they will be actively supported um, and aided by ourselves, uh, Treasury and State Services. Um, MB has a slightly different function as well in that we, are, um, func we have the functional lead role for all of government procurement. So we'll, where it's appropriate, we'll be providing procure, expert procurement ex, um, assistance. Um, but also what we hope um, is that as we work with the clients in this region and we work with the suppliers, which we're actively doing already, and, and we're getting all the right indications that this is the right way to go, is that we hope there will be a whole host of other benefits that we're currently not realising, um, other opportunities to speed the rebuild up. Um, to provide uh, better value for money for the taxpayer's dollar. So, and, and some of those are down there already. Um, but there'll be plenty of other things that we haven't yet considered and that will on, they will only come to light with 
a more effective engagement with the sector, which I hope for people who are here today and are, and are part of the sector, um, we would welcome your engagement in developing this concept further. Um, and uh, in, in terms of timescales, we'll, we'll be working on this um, prior to Christmas um, and we'll be reporting back to Cabinet um, uh, before the end of November. Uh, I'll just put my contact details up here. Um, so if you would like to uh, contact me, um, I, in, I'm in Christchurch uh, typically Tuesday to Thursday. So please, uh, please feel free to give me a call. I'll be more than happy to give you more details about the work that we're doing. Thank you.